What if female Deku was vinyl? Part 6. The training camp. Now we start this up with a, a little roll call from Aizawa, who decides to play a little bit of a prank by getting everyone up super early so they get on the bus for the training camp. And I'm gonna say it's a good distance away from UA, so they woke him up early. As we go to Octavia, who's already in, they're doing roll, and the only one missing is Vinyl. As Octavia says, I got this. As Octavia goes to Vinyl's room, knocks on Vinyl's room, Vinyl, it's time for us to go. As some of her, her classmates are behind her, Vinyl! That's odd. She usually answers when I knock on her door. Vinyl! As then, uh, we share a big crash. Okay, that's how like, it hurt in there. Is she okay? As the door opens and we see Vinyl's hair is all a mess. And, well, she doesn't have her shades on. And her headphones. And she has a little bit of tired eye. Uh, are you alright, Vinyl? As she pulls up a piece of paper. And she reads it, your favorite singer was on last night, so you didn't get a wink of sleep, did you? You really wrote that entire thing I was going to ask you, weren't you? And she simply nods. Well, you might want to get ready. We have to leave in about five minutes. As she gives a thumbs up before slamming the door in front of their faces. Okay, I'm surprised she did that. As everyone was just... Really confused about her appearance. Her hair was all over the place, she didn't have her shades on, and didn't have her, well, headphones. So, the entire class was a bit confused. As we go to Vinyl inside, he's currently just stuffing a soup case at the moment, as she's trying to get it, um, to shut. As she starts pushing down the soup case, as it won't close, she then, uh, runs to her door and then just jumps on the bed and on top of the soup case as it closes and clicks. As she grabs the soup case and starts going through the door, before fix it, before she goes to the door, she fixes her hair and puts on her shades and her headphones as she opens the door and walks to the bus. Ah, you're here, Vinyl, as Octa- well, Vinyl just- well, it gives a thumbs up as they get on the bus, as they go over to where they will meet the Wild Wild Pussycats. Now, Vinyl is asleep and no one notices her because, well, she's asleep. She made a sound barrier around herself, so technically no one heard. And where all the students fall into the forest, yeah, everyone falls except Vinyl, who's asleep in the back of the, uh, well bus. As, well, they drive to the entirety of the rest of the way to the camp while the students have to go through the entire thing. And Vinyl's just chilling, sleeping in the back of the bus. And, uh, and we're gonna go to present Mike, who's currently, um, a bit in a little bit of a cafe. Alright, uh, might as well talk with him up front. As... A man with white hair, in a suit, and, uh, well, red shades come walking in. As he sits down in front of President Mike. Well, if it isn't my, well, brother-in-law. Ah, well, uh, if it isn't, well, you can just call me, well, Shine. Shine? Like, is that what you're going by these days? As he gives present Mike a glare. <sighs> that is my code name when I'm at work, Mike. That's why I suggest you call me that. Yes, yes, I know your actual name is... Well, what, Victor? Yes, that is my name. The one I only let you, your sister and my daughter call me. Not you. You can go by Shine like everyone else does. Why do you insist by going by that name? As he just glares at President Mike again, never mind. Anyway, um, what brings you to Japan, my, uh, brother-in-law? Well, if you must know, 
some business. I'm having a very lucrative deal with the Hero Safety Commission, if you must know. I'm currently in the development of certain products, and your Hero Safety Commission seems to be interested. Also, I hear my daughter is going to a school here in Japan, and I want to drop by. Um, yeah. Which school is she in? As he is glaring at Mike. Um, uh, she's at UA, isn't she? Uh, no, 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 no. She actually went to... Don't lie to me. I can tell when you're lying. You always make that stuttering voice, and you also have sweat going down your face. Every time. You have gone, you gone away with it for the first two, but I've known you long enough. Yes, she's at UA. But you can't see her. She's on a trip uh, to the training camp. So, where's this training camp? As he starts making notes. No, 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 it's at the Wild Wild Pussycats headquarters. That's where the training camp is. Noted. I will check my schedule and see if I could drop by. After all, I'm a very busy businessman, and I would like to see my daughter every now and then. No, I very insist. You must be very bu busy. I had enough time to meet you, didn't I? As President Mike doesn't know what to say. Anyway, I will go meet with the Hero Safety Commission as soon as possible, and if I have time left, I will go see my daughter. As he pulls off the shades, revealing his red eyes, and you shall do nothing about it. As, well, President Mike gets chills down his spine. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes, you make yourself clear. Um, anyway, uh, I'm pretty sure you have to go somewhere. Actually, no, the meeting doesn't start for another hour, and I have at least a 30-minute drive, so we can chat for a little bit longer. So, how have you been? Well, if you must know, I've been doing well. Uh, I work at UA. That explains how my daughter got into UA. Let me guess, my, well, wife sent her. Uh, yes. As he sweats, I can't lie to him. Or else I'll be in trouble. Either way, I'm in, a, in for a lot of trouble by either one. And to be more honest, I think I'd be I'd like to be in more trouble with my sister. As he was thinking that. Now, as you know, I run a very, well, company for technology and communication. And as you know, my company tests these things. And, of course, the, the first people that usually get it are y'all. UA, of course, because y'all are my high buyers, which I do appreciate it. After all, after all, I did tell my, my daughter just a little while ago by sending her a text that I had sent the equipment to her favorite musician, and I have a feeling she stayed up all night to listen to it. Again. Ah, oh, that girl. Always wanting to listen to the fav famous rappers, uh, musicians, DJs, you name it. There was one time, as President Mike goes in, oh no, he's going on his rant about his daughter. Um, uh, we're gonna be here all day if he continues talking. Wait, if I keep him here all day, he won't be able to see his daughter. Uh, I'll get out of trouble with both of them. Yes, that could be, that could work. As he goes on a rant about... How much he, he he admires his daughter, loves his daughter, vinyl and all that. As then a little... His watch rings. Ah, look at that. Well, I better get going. Uh, I set a timer for 20 minutes so I can get ready to go. Anyway, that was a nice talk, President Mike. We'll have to talk again. Oh, remember one thing. You harm my little girl. You're good as dead. As he walks away. As we take a look at President Mike's face, this man is practically turned to stone from fear. As, okay, that was probably the most terrifying 20 minutes of my life. Man, I don't like having a conversation with him when his wife's not around, which is my sister, but still. As then, um, well, one of the waiters comes in and gives the pay paycheck. As he looks at the paycheck, as it's twenty dollars, I didn't worry anything. As he looks at his well, brother-in-law, as he's carrying food out the door. <sighs> I guess I can pay for him this once. 
as he pays the bill. As we go back to Vinyl, who has just arrived at the training camp with the heroes, of course, she is still asleep in the back of the bus. No one has noticed her, and... Well, they wait for everyone to get there, and... The Class 1A gets there. Class 1B has been there. Of course, they took the road with the bus. They didn't have to do the whole training bit, so they got lucky. As everyone arrives, and, well... Aizawa asks, where's Vinyl? Uh, we didn't see her with us. And she boarded the bus, so where is she? As we just hear, or well, we don't hear anything, we just see a vinyl coming out to the front door of the bus as she has her arms stretched out and is in a yawning position, but no sound comes out. As the Wild Wild Pussycats, Aizawa, says the jaws drop. You were on the bus the entire time. As Vinyl looks around and simply just types our phone. Was it was I not supposed to be? As uh as Class 1A is a bit irritated with her as she got to skip out all the little bit of a training area training thing they had to go through with the stone monsters and all that, the forest. To be fair, uh, she didn't get any sleep. Well, that explains why she slept on the bus. Thank you for informing me, Octavia. No problem. Anyway, of course, they introduce Coda. If I get his name wrong, I'm going to get... You know what, never mind. They introduce Coda. And Vinyl goes up to Coda as, well, he looks up at Vinyl, but is wondering why she's not speaking. Why aren't you speaking? As Octavia goes over there and touches Vinyl's shoulder. Oh, sorry, she can't speak. She was born without a, without a voice. Oh, um, then why is she trying to become a hero? Um, I don't know. As she simply puts on her phone, side job. Has Octavia surprised a side job? Yeah, side job. You just make a lot of money. I'm going to need a lot of money if I'm going to be up there as a DJ one of these days. Uh, I still remember. You want, you've you always talked about that since your childhood. Well, anyway, it's going to be funny if you perform at this year's music festival. As she taps her phone, why do you say that? Oh, you'll know when you know. As Octavia walks away, as Coda also just walks away from that interesting yet confusing conversation they just had, and uh, the night goes as usual. Now the next day when the training, now she had to especially think of her own training method, and the best way for this was actually to train with Bakugo, believe it or not. As she she wanted Bakugo to make as much, well, explosions and sound around her to where she can basically control all the sound and fill in her blind spots. So they trained about that for a, a, quite a bit. Now, of course, she was on the defense while Bakugo was on the attack because she's trying to be a little bit more defensive around her quark. Um, and she wanted help to vinylize her weak spots. Like, where the sound is the weakest. Now, Bakugo, I will admit, he can analyze, and once he gets... He's not as dumb as he seems. He had analyzed and find weak points in the sound where it was, like, well, the softest. The easiest to strike and shatter. Which helps vinyl find ways to reinforce them. And this is where it goes nighttime, to where we go to where Vinyl pulls out her suitcase and goes on to a little bit of a stage area. As everyone in the Class 1A and Class 1B is confused, as Octavia is like, Don't tell me you brought that. As she simply hits her suitcase and a full-on DJ set comes straight on out. As Vinyl has a gigantic smile on her face. As Octavia starts running and hides behind the building and puts in earplugs.
and everyone's confused until she starts playing as the DJ music starts blasting. As she starts to have her own DJ concert there at the training camp. Some of the class 1B students are jamming, some of the class 1A students and B students are suffering. I feel sorry for Jero. Her sat her ear jack quirk's going to have the most um recoil on this because she's listening to a high pitched sound like this. But anyway, ignore that. As she basically DJs for a while, and a lot of the people are actually loving it. And you could say this was kind of a reward thing, although she did get scolded by Aizawa afterwards because, well, technically it was their free time, but still, bringing a, a DJ set, entire DJ set to a training camp, I feel it would put some red flags up for that. Anyway, Koda was amazed by the music and all that. So Koda really enjoyed Vinyl playing the music, and made him a little bit more comfortable around them. And Octavia would actually talk with, well, a Koda in this, and actually explain why heroes are not all that bad. And would it go on and tell more about what heroes do, they're here to protect. Some may lose their lives, but they're trying to protect others. And kind of convinced him that it was a noble act, and that their that his mothers didn't or his parents didn't throw their lives away. And now, the night go as usual, and now we go on to the training camp attack, as Vinyl decides to actually follow Kota because she was interested in where he he goes. So she followed Kota to where his little cliff spot is. As Koda asks, why are you following me? As he turns around and sees Vinyl, who's just standing there with her hands in her pockets. As she walks over, as Zibli sits down and places a piece of paper. Says, I wanted to see where you went. After all, you try to sneak away and your footsteps indicate that you are trying to well be silent and sneaky. As she can indicate sound and knows very types of sounds. One, she can hear a ticking of a bomb. Um, another one, she can hear the, the slightest little taps of feet pr footprints, like people stepping on the ground, so if they're trying to be sneaky. And in some cases, she could even hear a heartbeat if she listens in, listens in because of her sound manipulation. Now, of course... Someone tries to slam from above to get Coda and Vinyl, and this is going to be muscular. As he thinks he obviously killed them with the smash. No. Vinyl made a sound barrier right above them as he's just sta as he realized he's standing on a thing of sound. As he's confused. As he looks down and sees they're both fine. As Coda gets scared because it's muscular, the villain that well killed his parents. As Vinyl looks up, and just simply puts her hands up, hand up as it sends muscular flying into the air. And it actually does some damage to the body, because it was right in the stomach. But he quickly puts muscle fibers around that area, lowering the pain and all that. As he smiles, this is going to be fun. As muscular goes in for several attacks, while... Vinyl is keeping a sound barrier around them up, as Muscular's throwing like a punch right, punch left, just constantly hitting the barrier. As then this would surprise Vinyl when the barrier then suddenly just shatters. As then she would quickly grab Coda and, well, put him in front of her and duck down as, a, as another quick sound barrier was formed around them. As the recoil hit Vinyl's back, but the actual attack hit the sound barrier as she had barely managed to set up the sound barrier in time as she had felt a little bit of pain from the, just the air pressure of that attack because she was protecting Coda as she stands back up and then points her hand what are you gonna do as then suddenly a giant attack well 
yeah, giant sound attack hits Muscular in the back, setting him off the cliff as, well, Vinyl looks down as then when she gets hit, well, technically in the face by a punch as Muscular just grabbed a rock and threw himself right back up. As Vinyl, well, falls backwards and half of her shades are, well, destroyed. As Coda goes over to her, are you alright? As she has like a big, well, punch mark on her face. As she gets back up, as her nose starts to bleed, as she touches her nose, as she looks visibly angry, and just for comedy's sake, we see what's on our phone right now. You destroyed my favorite pair of glasses. Or shades. Sorry. You're gonna pay. As then, well... Muscular tries to go in for another attack on both Coda and Vinyl, and this is where he gets a piercing, like, shot go straight through him, like an arrow went straight through his stomach, as he sent flying into the wall. As we see arrows of sound form around Vinyl, as kind of like it, like kind of how, like, wind arrows would form around certain people, but made of sound, as they all go as Muscular tries to dodge these, but some hit him, and they cause excruciating pain because the sound is going in the muscle fibers and causing the blood cells to really malfunction because they're taking commands off from the, you know, the brain. They're being distracted by this other sound that is going through the certain parts of the body. So muscle functions are now being slowed down. As then Vinyl then just decides to make, put her hands together and makes a cannon of sound just appear right next to her as it fires. As Muscular thinks he can, well, block it, as he makes a huge muscle fiber ball to protect himself. Yeah, this goes straight through his muscle fibers and hits him directly, sending him flying off the cliff and hitting the ground as he falls unconscious. Now, this is where Vinyl would just fall over as, well, sweat is visible on her face as she is obviously in a very, well, tired state. As Coda goes up to her, as she's in like a constant heavy breathing, all that. <sighs> kind of like that. But again, can't hear her speak, so. Anyway, we go to Octavia, who managed to put Moonfish to sleep in this universe. So... And the rest will go as pretty much canon. And now we go to the team that goes to find Vinyl, as Koda had gone to go get help. As, well, Aizawa and a few of the teachers have managed to find Vinyl. As she's in, like, an extremely ex exhausted state. As not really life-threatening, but could give really serious injuries if she's not treated as she is taken well not she's taken out of the train camp and is taken to the nearest hospital same with the students that got injured in the fight anyway hopefully y'all enjoyed this part i'll be back for part well seven make sure to like and subscribe